morning, everyone. Welcome to the governance track. Okay. Uh, so, uh, so uh, yesterday one said. Uh, so nowadays, the whatever the presentation should start with uh, with a quote from someone. Okay. So here we go. I I I am going to follow the same. Okay. Uh, so this is from uh, Steve Jobs. So so this is really truth behind one of his innovations. So, and uh, I'm from a company that uh, we are not uh, fear for failures, and also we are not fear to learn from our mistakes. Uh, so if, if you are user of our governor registry uh, four series or three series, you had uh, uh, only one interface, that is an admin console. So regardless of your, whatever your role, you are a consumer, you are a governor or administrator, there's only one boring place. So over the time, we learned that's the kind of a mistake we did. And we thought, is there any better way with the technology advance? Is there any better way to cater different, different user groups? So we did an uh, exercise. So who are the users of this governance product or governance solutions? And what are the expectations? So based on that, uh, we try to come up with a, uh, sorry. So we try to come up with a uh, dedicated UIs or dedicated experiences. Good. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Uh, so. So GRH5 introduces a completely revamped user-centric experience to true new governance center. So that means so there we have identified as user roles. So basically these are the three or dedicated or three identified user roles that deal with the governance solution. That is consumer, publisher, and agents. The most important set of, uh, set of people or user roles are Consumers, those are the people going to use your services. For example, earlier days, most of the cases, governor registry used as a kind of a catalog. So you can catalog your services and your whatever digital assets, and people can come and find it. But uh, in nowadays, uh, people expect a lot more specialized and a lot more customized experiences. For if you, if you go to the uh, app store, if you go to the Google App Store, if you go to the Apple Store, so th they provide you a personalized experience, right? You can go there and you can find what are the uh, applications available, what their user ratings, what the people are talking about this application, so on. So why don't we bring same concept to your internal organizations? So if you are a service developer, how do you promote or how do you popularize your services within your organization? Right? So that is the expectation in these days. Right? Maybe you, are, you, are, you, are, you have created the wonderful service, but if nobody is going to use it, there is no point to invest on that. Right? So that is, the, uh, that is the consumer role, basically. So we have a dedicated store front for the consumers. Then publishers. The publishers are not administrators. It's kind of a, the middle management layer or something like that. So they are the people. They have dedicated uh, set of requirements. So we have another UI called publisher. So this governors or publishers come to that particular UI and uh, do their uh, governing tasks. Then we have agents. So usually the governor registry is meant to be integrated with some other systems, most of the cases, to govern other systems, application servers, enterprise service buses, or gateways and so on. In such a situations, so we deal with other systems. So that is called as an agent. For in order to interact agents, we have a REST and SOAP APIs. So these are the main three uh, interfaces for new governance center or new governance registry 5.0 and 5.3 versions. Store and publisher are for the humans means for basically for consumers and publishers 
and uh, resistance op api is for agent okay so let's let's look at uh, each of these uh, shortly uh, first let me start with uh, governance store so this is this is the screen of a governance store it's pretty much like uh, uh, whatever the app stores you can find in, in these days right so once you catalog whatever your digital asset it could be rest services it could be soap services or whatever whatever the asset right those are listed as a uh, in store so your consumers whoever the people consume these services they can come to the store and search or they can go through the tags and they can easily find what are the services or what are the assets available earlier days we used to have services but in these days it's not just services it could be any asset any digital asset belong to your organization then we have enterprise scale search so we use solar apache solar as our backend so it's a very high performance search backend and uh, you other interesting features are these are based on enterprise store that means this ui this ui is not static right so you, <coughs> for example so if if you go to organization they have their own termin and they have their own look and feel so using javascript you can customize it so earlier days uh, so we uh, if, if you look at earlier days our products it's really hard to customize or adopt to your, your own uis but uh, when it come to this uh, new uis like the governance store and governance publisher you can easily adapt or you should you, you should you can easily customize this ui is according to your organization uh, requirements so that is another great feature so this is built in support for theming and customizations this is all for example this is the default store view but when you, in your organization you can change the look and feels and colors and icons everything according to your organizational uh, policies or organizational designs okay then you have tags i mentioned mentioned you have tags and then you have something called notification support for example let's say you are consuming a particular service right and you want to know so let's say if there is a new version so for example let's say there is a particular credit card service and you are using the service and whenever there is a new version available uh, you want some kind of a notification you don't need each and every day come to the store and find out whether a new version is available so what you can do is you can subscribe for a notification right it could be email or it could be uh, the alerts or whatever the, there are several mechanisms through that you you get you will be get notified for example if if something if if there is a new service available you can get an email something like that or if there is a change in your service or whatever the service you, you are consuming you get a email notification so this notification support is there for your uh, asset consumers and social features that is really necessary features so within your organization it could be internal or external you can have some kind of a social uh, features for example if it is an external thing uh, you can um, share the services and your experience through with the social networks and also you you have something called bookmark so you can bookmark this assets and there are user reviews as you can see here so you can review you can provide some like uh, so amazon and app store or google store you can add comments and you can add uh, ratings right so basically these are the expectation from the asset consumers so all these things are out of the box available with the store so another great feature the the first one is uh, the asset comparison support so let's say like i'm if i go back to my previous example so you have two versions of the same service so as a consumers as a user you want to find out what are the differences right so let's say uh, you are uh, you are using a payment gate to api now through the email you get to know there is a new versions available the next thing is you have to identify in order to uh, come up with estimation uh, about your changes you need to find out what are the changes 
how many methods has changed, what are the new methods introduced, and so on. So in order to do that, we have something called comparison tool. So this comparison tool provides uh, comparison between two versions of same asset. So these are another tools. And most importantly, you can customize the uh, asset view. For example, if you go, so for, this is default asset view. Right? This is the default asset view. For example, if it is a SAGA file, right? if it is a SAGA file, there is no point to visualize it SAGA page like this. If it is a WSDL file, there is no point to visualize that file uh, like a listing. For, so this is, this is how we display a SAGA file. So we have embedded the SAGA UI. Right? Uh, so, and in, uh, in for the, uh, the GREC upcoming version, there is a visualization for Vistas, so on. So if your organization, for example, let's say image. So if, let's say you are showing a user profiles, or let's say you are showing a vehicles, right? So when you show the vehicles, what you can do is uh, you can embed a, a video about a vehicle, or you can have a set of uh, uh, images instead of just text. So these are, you can do this kind of a modification through JavaScript very easily. So that is, that is another flexibility with this governance store. How? And also, you can write extensions. right? Uh, so, so the one extension is, for example, let's say, uh, so when, when, whenever your uh, consumers consume your uh, asset, this asset could be services, API, or whatever it is, so you want to uh, make a kind of a, you, you want to, uh, manage subscription and you want to uh, charge them according to their usages. In such a situation, what you can do is you can write your extensions. Right? So these are some of the, uh, the extensions wrought by our users. Payment gateway integration, subscription management, and key generations, and so on. So, and, and this is a really cool feature available with upcoming release. I mean, in next month, we will release a 5.3. 5.3, so 5.3, we are introducing a taxonomy. So if you are new to this, tech, uh, if you are new or if you, are, uh, in, uh, uh, if you don't have a clear idea what, what we mean as a taxonomy, so if you go to Amazon, so this is uh, captured from Amazon. So, so these are the categorization and categorization and filters, basically. So if you go to Amazon, uh, so you go to a department, so you can pick whatever the department. So either you can go to sportwear or you can go to electronics. So let's say I went to electronics, then I will, I will give them some phase of taxonomy. That is, I can, so if I'm interested on laptops, so I can narrow down my result set based, based on uh, display resolution, hard disk size, right? So th th that may be the case for your asset as well. So your, your asset, that could be service, API, or whatever the things, you have some set of a facet. So, so th this, this, is, this is a really cool feature for your consumers. So based on these categorizations and facets, you can uh, provide the very great search features and discovery features for your consumers. So in upcoming release, we are, so these are some working prototypes. So this will be available with the, uh, the governor registry. 5.3 release. So we support both hierarchical taxonomies and facet taxonomies out of the box. So you can define your taxonomies and attach it easily with the governance center. So now I move into the governance publisher. Right? The governance publisher, if I remember, the governance store is for the, your consumers. So governance publisher is for the, your governors or whatever the publishers. So this is the place uh, your governing uh, managers or your governors come and auth auth authorize or uh, they auth uh, your assets. Basically, they come and create asset, they edit asset, they change life cycle, et cetera. So now I am going to discuss what are the features available for uh, governors. So first thing is we, uh, so this is the landing page. So whenever you go to the, uh, governance publisher, this is the landing page. So, and also this is customizable. So uh, most of the cases, this is people write soap services and rest services. 
So that's why you can see this. But if your organization, you have some, your own asset, so you can customize these things very easily to JavaScript and change the landing page. So it's asked, what, it's like, uh, what do you want to do today? So you want to add a SERP service, or you want to add a service, and so on. And this is another important aspect of the governance center, the life cycle management. So as a publisher, uh, you can manage manage a life cycle. For example, if you are working on a kind of a project, you go, the project should go through a several life cycles. It could be service, or it could be application, right? So you start developing, then you go to a QA, then you go to the pre-production, then production, so on. So depending on each and, each and every organization, you have some kind of a procedures. So what you can do is, you can define that particular procedure as a life cycle within the governance center. So it, it, it will display graphically like this, and using a, the hyperlink or kind of a button, you can easily transit from one state to another state. And also, uh, you can easily, uh, so for example, there is something called executors. When you, when you transform uh, a state from one particular state to another particular state, you can do some particular task. That's what we call as an executor. For example, let's say when you put something, say service, you are developing a service, and when you deploy service from QA to production, you should send some emails to a, let's say, higher management. So you can automate through this, this system. So when you just click promote button, and when you go to the test into production, it will automatically send some mails to your higher management. Hey, this service is live now, something like that. So when, when you, for example, uh, another use case. So when you move your life, uh, the service lifecycle from development to testing, what you can do is you can easily create uh, some kind of a ticket in your Jaira or whatever the issue management system. For example, let's say it's a bank uh, credit card service. Hey, now but credit card service is QA state, why don't you test it? Some kind of a Jaira, Baxilla kind of a ticket. So instead of manually creating it, you can automate it. So your quality assurance teams automatically receive the ticket. So these kind of automations are possible with these life cycles. So another one is the association. So you can associate things. So I will later I will come back to here. So I, and I will describe what is, what the use case of the associations. So these are the another good example of the uh, of our uh, innovative approach we uh, taken at with the 5.0 uh, version onwards. So dependency graph, right? So when you have a service or when you have some kind of asset, how do you visualize things? So particularly, if, if for example, is, if it is a microservice-based architecture, so your services depend on multiple uh, other dependencies. So what does what, this look like? For example, if you want to change one service, you need to estimate what are the impact, how many other services get impact with this change. So in order to estimate these things, we have something called uh, the dependency graph. So when you click on asset, you can get this dependency graph. Through this dependency graph, you can traverse and you can identify what are the dependencies and what, what type of dependencies. For example, uh, uh, some service used by some other service, or some services composed using another service, so on. So, and you can define your own association type, right? So next one is uh, REST API. So I, I already covered uh, two things, uh, the publisher and the store. So the third one is, uh, our third interface is REST and SOAP API. And this is mainly for agents. So if you want to integrate uh, our governance registry with uh, another systems, uh, that we that's what we call as a, uh, agents. So for that, we have our uh, uh, REST API and SOAP APIs. OK, now I will move into to discuss about some use cases. So what are the use cases? The first use case is 
Oh, here, what I'm going to discuss is some patterns. So while working with a lot of our uh, governance registry customers, we have identified some patterns. So here, I am going to present some of these patterns. Right? So if you are not sure what you are building right now with the governance center, uh, this may help you. Right? The f so one pattern is uh, how we could use governance center registry to govern a service gateways or API gateways. So this is, this is the pattern, right? Uh, yeah. So this is the pattern. Uh, say you have a, some kind of a API gateway. This could be WSO2 API manager, WSO2 ESB, or it could be CA layer 7, IBM DP, the mainframe based, uh, some kind of a hardware based uh, gateway, or it, can, it could be any software based uh, gateways. But uh, if those gateways does not come with the, some kind of a governance model, what you can do is you can use governor register uh, to govern that particular gateway. So this is what uh, this is a typical example. So REST service, for example, uh, so your application service, you deploy REST services. So there are several ways you can uh, represent this REST services. When you deploy a REST service into your application server, for example, let's say you deploy your uh, REST services uh, into a WebLogic or uh, Tomcat or whatever, JBoss or whatever the application server. Uh, so there are several approach uh, you can follow. So one is manual creation. So you can, come, once you deploy the service into application, you can manually uh, create a REST service in governance center. Or you can automate it. For example, from you can have some kind of a dispatcher in your application server, and whenever application get deployed, it will call the governance center's REST API. Through that, we can create a representation, metadata representation in governance registry. Also, we have something called discovery agents. The discovery agent mean so we can write a some kind of a agent and deploy into a governance center. So, and you can schedule it. For example once a week or once a day, it will go and look at what are the new services available in a particular application server. Right? In either way, let's say you have these REST services. So what you can do is writing executor, writing a lifecycle executor, you can easily uh, create an API in a service gateways. Right? So we have done this for our own API manager and IBM DP and layer 7. So this is a well-known pattern, right? Through, through governance center, you can automate your API creation and API management capabilities. So this is really interesting because if in, your, in most of the cases, the people used to have some kind of a gateways. And most, some cases, they don't have that governance capabilities with these gateways. So in, the, in that case, through governance center, you can bring that governance experience to that gateway, right? So the only requirement is in gateway side, we need some sort of a public API. So this is also the same thing. So earlier case, the governance center directly called the APIs of uh, gate, uh, gateways, but in this case, uh, you, it will go through, it will initiate some kind of a build server, and build server will deploy artifact into a uh, API gateway. So both are possible. So the second case, the runtime enforcement. So you, you can manage policies. Basically, you can manage, so you can represent your services in your governance publisher, and you can represent your policies. So then how to enforce these policies? So what you can do is, uh, so there is a publisher, there is a UI. So you, you can go to a particular service, and for example, let's say as a real world example, let's say you have a SOAP service. So you go to the SOAP service and find out what are the security policies available. And you just, to web UI, you just attach it. Right? So behind the scene, what you can do is you can write something called association handler. So the, uh, this association handler identify this particular policy is now attached with this service. And it will reflect the same thing in an actual gateway. So it, it will push this particular policy to the actual gateway. 
then the actual service get secured with that particular policy. So you have to write a handler, but to writing, uh, writing, uh, by writing a handler, you can automate these systems. So you don't need to go to gateway interfaces and attach policies. Instead of that, through so governance center, you can do it. And once you do that, if, I remember, if you remember the dependency graph I showed you, so in, in dependency graph, you will get a nice view. This service is secured with this particular policy, like that. So, so the third use case is unified governance. So this is something we are trying to do with our platform even in near future. So we are still experiment with that. That's mean, for example, assume, uh, for example, WSO2 Cloud. So you go to WSO2 Cloud and deploy your application. And now you go to the, our API cloud and try to create an API for that particular application or that particular service. In today, you have to repeat this information. For example, if it is uh, the, your application, let's say it's a RESTful service, you already have your context, you, your root context, your resources you already have. So what's the point uh, to repeat the same step in API, uh, API cloud? So through this governance center, what we are, what we are trying to do is so when you deploy a service to a, our app cloud, we capture the required metadata and push to the API cloud. So when, when, now when you come back to the API cloud and try, when you try to create the API, some of these information are available. For example, backend URL, those are already available because whenever, so whenever we deploy something into a WSO server, we are trying to push this information into governor registry through this governor registry this, serve, this metadata is available for other services. So this is try with, uh, in our next platform, this is what we are trying to deliver. The unif unif unification of metadata through our uh, platform. The, our initial goal is to build this uh, for our own product, but later you can easily replace. For example, you can see the WSO2 application server here. But you, instead of this one, you can bring your own application server. And you can use, like that, you can replace some of this component with your own products. So this is, uh, we, we are still developing or st still in experiment level, but in near future we will uh, provide this capability. Another one is, I don't have enough time, the service discovery. This is really important in these days uh, for the uh, microservices. So we support two service discovery mechanisms. Basically you can write something called discovery agent so it discovery agent support for pool model. That's mean governance registry visit a particular server and discover the available service, right? Second one is, this is, this is more, more applicable to microservices, push model. That means that when a microservice wake up, right? When, when the microservice boot up, it can send a notification to governance registry, right? Say I am alive. So in governor registry, uh, we can represent that mi microservice as a service and an endpoint so that uh, consumers can uh, utilize it. Basically, we support uh, both these patterns. So microservices, if you go to microservices patterns, there is two patterns called server-side discovery and client-side discovery. Through governor registry REST API, we can support both of these options. So when it comes to product roadmap, uh, so these are the, uh, our uh, immediate goals, support for unified governance and the manager applications, uh, so on. And also, uh, we are trying to redesign all of our governance registry based on carbon five, right? Uh, okay, so that's what I want. <laughs>